Hello and welcome to the Seahawkers podcast. I'm your host, Brandon Schultz, and it is draft day, day two. And look at Mr. Clinton that's Bonner cool. holding up that UConn shirt because yes. that's right. I have brought on the perfect person to talk about the Seahawks draft pick in the third round because not only is he a UConn alum, Mr. Clinton Bonner, <laughs> you are also a huge proponent of the Seahawks picking a guard and they've done that. They picked a guard. They picked a, a guard from the university of Connecticut. How you doing, buddy? This is the summer of George Brandon, two worlds coming together. This is amazing. Uh, that, that was, Hey, this is a, a very fun coincidence, right? So Yukon's on a heater. The vibes are strong. This guy can play football. We needed a guard. He's a big dancing bear. And I'm excited to talk about our next, our new Seahawk Christian Haynes. This is a cool pick, man. And I know we'll get into it where we got him 81st overall. Most folks had him quite a bit higher and maybe just small school UConn versus other schools. Who knows why? But 81 picks in, I, I think, Brandon, I think we have a day one starter and that excites the crap out of me, dude. It, it, it'll remain to be seen whether or not he's a day one starter because he does play the right guard spot, which is the same spot as Anthony Bradford. Those two, I think, are going to compete for that guard spot. Sure. I, he's he's definitely a different type of player than Anthony Bradford, though, because Bradford, kind of the big road mm -hmm. grader dude, Christian Haynes, more of the, the mover uh, athletic type build and it shows up on tape when you when you watch Christian Haynes game at just how uh, where he excels is primarily in that pulling, moving, run blocking type mode. Yeah, we talked about this the moment that McDonald became the coach, then Grubb became the offensive coordinator. The big thing. And then we then we, we re-signed Noah Fant and we're like, OK, we're starting to get a couple of breadcrumbs as to what they want to go do. And you go watch the UW tape all sorts of motion, all, all sorts of just like, you know, uh, just tons of pulling from the guards and tackles and within, within Grubb's uh, UW system. And you're right, Brandon, like the juxtaposition between Bradford's game, who's a big, he, he's really good in the run game. He really did, did some really cool special things as a rookie in the run game. And he was less effective in the pass game. Um, but he wasn't that kind of a mover. And you put on the tape for Christian Haynes and you're like, Oh, and this is not like, oh, UConn's playing, you know, sub uh, sub people and, and their schedule's not, it's not that great. And the reason I say it doesn't kind of matter is because it's like, it's the first step stuff. It's like the ball's hiked and he's out of his stance into his pull. And then he's got like enough strength and enough, enough, and, and enough to, you know, get to where he's got to get to. And a lot, a lot of times second level, sometimes tertiary level, but overall it's like, dude, his first step quickness is athleticism out of, out of the gate. It's impressive, and I think it goes right into what Grubb is looking to do. So that's why I'm leaning towards day one starter. We got our guy. Well, and just the fact that, yes, that when you compare him to Bradford and maybe what they're trying to do with the offense, it, it probably would make a lot of sense uh, that he is able to start ahead of Bradford and go down the measurables six foot three guy. So kind of on the shorter side, which can be good for an interior that's offensive lineman. 317 yeah. pounds, so he's got a lot of beef to him. But in addition to having that beef, I mean, he was a five, uh, five, almost five flat for his 40 yard dash, which is incredible for a 317 pound guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, despite being on the shorter end at six three, he has those 33 and a half inch arms. So the that's what you want. You want them to be able to to push off of those defensive linemen. They're you know keep them engaged. Uh, you, you don't want to have short arm uh, offensive linemen. Uh, bench twenty five reps had a thirty three like, inch eh, vertical. That's which, that's the that's the one right. That's a pretty right. explosive vertical for a three hundred seventy pound man. That's that's, that's pretty. The, that's pretty around explosive. the ninety ninety fifth percentile type vertical for uh, for that. Uh, for the offensive line in general. So, right. Which, uh, and then eight, six broad jump, which was fine, which is fine. Right. The bench is a little bit under or like meh, yeah, uh, it's meh. but it's meh. But again, he's got long levers, which, you know, if you got the longer arms, hard, it's actually harder it makes to it bench. tougher to bench. It makes it a little tougher, right? You got to go a little further. That's just the, that's just gravity doing its job. 
the the explosiveness, the vertical getting and that and that is like it shows up and his his 10 yard split is is pretty elite, like really, really good. His RAS score is like a 9.1 out of 10. So you know, if you look at that, he's basically uh, in the upper 10% of athletes that have been measured all time for guards since they started doing this. So he's quite athletic. And that vertical with his quickness is like, okay, you can understand how he gets out of his stance really, really quickly and into space very quickly. Those are the two pieces. And then you watch a little bit of his film and you go, oh, dang. You know, and they they played Michigan. And you go watch some, some of the stuff versus Michigan. And while the UConn team, led by Jim Moore Jr., by the way, <laughs> while the UConn team wasn't exactly, you know, a, a great football team, um, he's doing his job for the most part. And he's doing it really, really well. And now he's a Seahawk man. So I'm 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 very happy the way this all broke. Um, when we took just spinning it back to yesterday, when we get Byron Murphy, and I'm like, oh man, I really want to go get a guard. I will say all the folks that were like, hey, it's deep. Don't don't worry. Don't hit the panic button. Even in the third round, I guess if you put it up there into like you know Fatano and then whatever you might go get at defensive tackle in the third round or Byron Murphy and a guy you know like Christian Haynes who's a pretty good guard. I gotta just eat a little crow early and say I think I like the way this broke. It it broke well, and you brought up Jim Mora Jr., his head coach, and his head coach was glowing in terms of character for Christian Haynes, which take that for what you will. If you want to you know, accept Jim Mora Jr.'s uh, character um, evaluation, but uh, sure, sure. <laughs> it's better than than nothing. But yeah. uh, four year starter at the University of Connecticut, so yeah, played all four years. You look at his PFF grades; he consistently graded out in the 80s for his final two years. Uh, over the last three years, he only averaged one sack given up uh, the the last three years. So. Do it well enough in pass blocking. You can rate the competition, though. Actually, as pass blocking is probably where I have the most concern because you watch some of the senior bowl reps, mm -hmm. and he was just a little bit slow to to really anchor against the guys he was facing off with, and and so th that's where a little bit of that concern comes into it for me. Well, also then you pair that with like his bench was not tremendous. It's like okay, yeah. it's okay. So. If he's getting put back in his rocker a little bit, he's a little slow to, for that for that particular part in, in pass pro. And yeah, I I agree. Uh, now again, what kind of pass pro will the grub offense need? And is it going to be is it going to be a lot more like Adam's big worry was? Oh boy, this is rinky dink. This is you know everything around the line of scrimmage. This is all you know real quick RPO type stuff. A little motion and hit the hit the first guy. And Adam was not into that. Um, and maybe that's the, I don't know. I don't know what Grubb's going to do, but maybe it's more towards that than we have been, where it's just the ball's getting out a lot sooner anyway. And then when you run the plays where he's getting in space as a run blocker, or but dare I say, Brandon, a really good weapon in, I'm going to say it, Brandon, the screen game, right? Ooh. So Ooh. maybe, maybe, I mean, we've been a terrible screen team for a long time now. Um, maybe this can be one of the keystones or a keystone that gets us into a position where, you know, Kenneth Walker in space with dudes who can move really quickly on the offensive line. You know, you got Charles Cross. Cross moves really well, dancing bear type. So it's just trending towards that grubby uh, offense. And and uh, I'm excited to see what, uh, what this will do. But I'm I, thinking about it, man. Like, Brandon, we might be able to screen actually well and what would that do to give Gino some relief on you know like not be like so predictable on third down for for our Seahawks right I'm glad you brought that up because he is one of the perfect types for the screen game because he is quick so he can get out to where he needs to be quickly and I think one of the things that stood out I mean just watching the highlights is that once he is in space the way he engages with the defenders like he stays in the way he's not quick to get moved off or shoved mm -hmm. off like he he stays there and that's been a problem for seattle with with the screen game is that they yeah they can get to where they need to be but then they can't block and <laughs> this guy he's he can he can make that combination work 
Yeah, he could he could move in space and then and then execute a block, right? right. So, yeah, that's uh, it's that's just been it's been an Achilles heel for us in so many ways. So that'll be that'll be very cool to see as well. So I mean, overall, man, I just I think it's a great pick. And what do we got? So next tomorrow we are what the second overall pick? Is that right? In the in the fourth second round, second overall pick for day three in the draft. Very nice. And we have two fourths, if if I uh, remember correctly. Is that still true? Right. I, I think nice. it should be unless, you know, things change here quickly as we're recording this. Yeah, we, we shall <laughs> see now. Uh, and, and okay, so at this point, Brandon, all right, we got our DT. We got our guard. We're going up the spine as, as on both sides of the ball. Where do you think we go next, uh, in, in your opinion? Well, I think linebacker at, at some point would be nice. Safety mm -hmm. would be nice at some point. But when you get to this point for me, it's kind of, it, it depends on who's there. I know Schneider says you draft for need toward the end of the draft, which I don't, I don't know necessarily what that means unless you just need special teams players, but, uh, and backups. But uh, yeah, when you, when you look at who they have left and maybe we'll see a trade, we saw a flurry of trades, gosh, toward the mm -hmm. top of round three, especially and uh whether or not they could move out of that 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 could be um you know for teams looking at who's still left on the board it, it could be a valuable trade piece that other teams would want to trade into that number two spot to to get one of those top players left on the board for them but yeah seattle 102 which is the second pick in the fourth round 118 which is toward the middle of the round and then there's going to be a long wait <laughs> with no picks in round five Two picks in round six, and then one in round seven. Yeah, well, that's okay. We, we, we're, we're ex we are executing a nice draft thus far with our we're two for two, in my opinion. Um, is is I think he's still out there. Is uh, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. still available? I mean, I know linebackers have not been flying off the board. Colson, no. I know, and others. Colson but... went early to the Chargers. Yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah, I think yeah. Peyton Wilson came off the board. Uh, here toward the back uh, end of the third, so he, he hung around a while, which was yeah. which was kind of shocking. Um, and the Packers took Edring Cooper, right? I believe they are the, they right. are the ones who got him. So Trotter is still available, that, and that's I think we're... the Kentucky linebacker may still be available too, which was one of the guys I had my eye on. So cool. yeah, we'll have to see how that goes on the final day of the NFL draft. Any takeaways, Clinton, from the press conferences? Listening to Mike and John, uh, one of the cool things we found out is that our first round pick actually a Seahawks fan. Yeah, that was amazing. That so two two very cool things. That was really cool to be. And and then you st and then he's like, oh, I loved Michael Bennett as a kid, in the yeah. LOB, and you're like, and then you're like, I'm getting older, and that's okay. <laughs> um, but that's okay. We're all moving through time, uh, and but super cool. I mean, amazing that that a dude playing down in Texas it was a Seahawks fan. I get it. If I was a if I was a defensive player and of that uh, age, I'd, I'd be very attracted to the Seahawks and their style of play too. Um, that's why we have so many fans over in Germany because of the, the time in which the LOB became huge. Then you know they blew up in Europe. Uh, the other piece too is that uh, Christian Haynes is a big Geno fan, so he was out there right, talking up Geno that he was a fan of his in West Virginia. So um, you know, I just think the vibes are are setting up very, very nicely. I like. I just, I, I love it, man. I love the fact that this dude, um, that Byron Murphy as a kid was a, was a Seahawks fan. I just think it's dream come true type stuff. I had no idea that was the case. And, yeah. um, that's just fun. That's just, that, imagine that, imagine okay, then playing for your favorite team when you were a kid, that's, that's some Hollywood stuff. So now it's, and did you, did you also see, did you see his, his tweet or Instagram post when, um, uh, uh, Donald retired when Aaron Donald retired? Uh, yes, I did. And they also were asking John Schneider for comparisons and mm. his, he went to Aaron Donald, which I, he was, he tried to hedge it as best as he could, but in terms <laughs> of he the way he the moves, back, yeah. the size comparison, he's like, I'm not trying to say he's Hall right, of Famer, right, Lawrence right. Taylor, but <laughs> right. But, yeah, but. The guy, it, well, it's tough to look at him and not get that reminder because he is that same kind of build he's and it has some of the similar skill sets so he's absolutely bricked too you know he's, he's just so jacked it, it which is cool which is he's which, got style you saw him with yeah. the Gucci, uh and in the draft selection night yeah. 
got that good fit for sure. So, so yeah, I think, like I said, two for two. Let's see how uh, tomorrow wraps and if we get a few more picks or we just kind of stick and pick the whole way through. But I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, what we're doing so far. I think we've had an interesting, a very meaningful off season. And I think if we, mainly for me, Brandon, if we can get uh, a prospective good linebacker in the house, which I think we're going to, I think I'll be really happy. Like those are the areas, you know, yes. Then you fill in every other stuff. That's fine. But um, I would not mind double dipping if we end up uh, trying like a, another guard or, or we, you know, we, we want to go grab a, you know, just double dipping essentially another defensive tackle uh, and just, just whatever, go, go two for, I think that's kind of worked in the past for us where like one of them does work out and that's, I, I kind of like hedging that way. But overall, if we, if we spend one of the next two picks on a linebacker that has some promise, then I think we could chalk this up and say, this has been a good draft and you know, whatever, whatever the rest happens, happens. Well, I will just throw it out there because he is still out there and available. Jordan Travis, who would be Ooh. my pick for if, if they're going to go ahead and take a quarterback, don't, don't wait, just go ahead and take him there with the second pick in the fourth round. And, uh, and then, yeah, you got a quarterback to stash away that I think could be a little bit better than Sam Howell. And, you know, maybe even a, I, if you're, if you're projecting out at which one has more upside in the future, I like Jordan Travis a lot. So I don't mind it, uh, but then I would like to package Sam Howell, like same day. Oh, I don't, yeah. We don't need to carry three quarterbacks. Like they don't play without dressing three. And at some point I would want to move one of those dudes. I don't know uh, if you have to do it right away though, because you can get he, Travis he, in, you can go through camp a little bit, say there's an injury right, right, with, yeah. with another team and you can say, Oh, Hey, you know, we got, we got a dude here that uh, in Sam Howell that played an awful lot of starting snaps last year. He could hold, hold it down for you while your yeah. starters injured. He threw a lot of touchdowns and a lot of yards and a lot of passes. Right. And, and I realize interceptions too. I am not, a, I am not a huge interceptions matter that much guy. I don't love it when Jameis throws the ball over the yard. It that's a bit different. Um, I, but I, I also equate interceptions to folks who are willing, willing to take chances and typically the most aggressive quarterbacks who have the big numbers, they typically do have higher interceptions. And that's why I like Aaron Rodgers and Russell Wilson's years are in, are like even more insane than I think we thought they were in the moment. Uh, because most dudes are more like Josh Allen. Yeah, they might get to 33, 35 touchdowns, but they're going to throw 17 interceptions. Even even Mahomes is susceptible too. So I'm not I'm not too anti uh, anti interception. I don't know enough about Jordan Travis to say whether I like him better than Sam Howell or not. I don't love spending a pick on a quarterback if we can't turn Sam Howell around and go get something, um, something it, whatever in the next six months back for yeah. him because then it would feel like a waste. I, I think you could. I, I mean, a lot of backup quarterbacks ultimately have value, so yeah. um, th they would be able to find a spot for them. I, I, one thing before we get on out of here, though, Clinton. Sure, yeah. You explain got? the shirt to me. I, I don't know if you've ever <laughs> explained to me. If anybody, you, if you're just listening via audio, yes. it is Clinton. He's got like a pint glass in one hand. Wait, 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 wait. I got I to stop it. It is, it is not me. Oh. I am not. I am not that is not you riding the no. Yukon Husky. No, this is my boy I, Vinny. This is oh, Vinny. That's Vinny. Okay. This is my this is my guy Vinny. I did the sketch comedy show with for many many yes. years. TNT Dynamite Thursdays. This is uh Vin Convertito, and I I took the photograph. So okay. uh, so uh, so it is. But you know your description was great. Uh, Go ahead. You can describe it from there. You're doing better. <laughs> okay. Than so it's not Clinton. It's Vinny holding yep. a pint glass. He's got his hand up on his his cap. Like he's a cowboy, but it's not a cowboy hat. It's a ball cap. And he, he is riding the University of Connecticut mascot, the Husky. And I don't know, is this on campus or is this like in your backyard? You have a Yukon Husky <laughs> statue because you're that much of a, a alum homer. Oh, no. OK, so this is great. Um, so there's a couple of things here. That is an awesome statue. It's an illuminated statue. It is on the Yukon campus in stores, Connecticut, right? Uh, you know, Mansfield stores. Shout out to Bloomy. Bloomy uh, went to high school right at EO Smith, which shares the campus with the Yukon. So a little bit of history for the the uh, the, hawk, the hawkers out there, the Seahawkers. And 
So this is on campus and it's a pretty big statue because you can tell he's riding it like he's a, you know, that's a large, yeah, it's, uh, almost it's a like horse. horse size. Yeah, it's a, it's a horse sized husky. The husky is named Jonathan. That is the, the husky's uh, husky. That's his name. I think they're on like Jonathan six or something like that now. I'm not sure. Um, the real one, kind of like Ugga from the Bulldogs, right? Uh, and every single time, and this is this is right next to Gamble Pavilion. Gamble is their their home court. Uh, the UConn basketball team splits time. Sometimes they play in Hartford, which is stupid because it's like lame and, le and less noisy. And then there's like an eight thousand person stadium on campus called Gamble, a little dome, and it it's like insane. It's just so loud and fun. This statue is about. I don't know, maybe 150 yards or so from the entrance to Gamble. So every time we go to a game, which is at least once a year, my boy Vinny <laughs> gets on Jonathan. We get a pick, and I happened to capture this one two years ago, and then we made it a T-shirt. That's it. That's the story. So it is. It is not frowned upon to ride the the college mascot. No one's ever stopped him. <laughs> you know, he does it. He does it every year. No security ever came up to him. No cops ever were like, "You shouldn't do that." Uh, they so, didn't. They yeah. didn't have Christian Haynes posted as a, a bodyguard <laughs> for the Yukon Husky on campus. <laughs> they did not. They did not. So it's uh, you know, just it just hops up there. We get the picture, and then and, and that's that. So it's great. I've got several pictures, but only one was T-shirt worthy. That's how that goes. Well, I am glad to have a fellow UConn alum as part of the team because, you know, you got to you got to add these guys and uh, give you an extra reason to root for them. We're going to be rooting for Christian Haynes to see if he will be a day one starter. Clinton's a proponent of it. I'm for it. And I think with that, Clinton, there's only one thing left to say. Go Hawks. Go Huskies and go Hawks. Let's go.